What's up, fellow Sambarians? Uh, today I was gonna do, well, let's start over. Today I was gonna make a little video on how to replace the lock assembly for your fuel lid. You can see that, that's the part number. Um, they are still making these, obviously I got it. So if, let's say there's a little plastic piece here that holds the cable that runs inside the cab to the lever uh, underneath your shifter and the plastic piece on here, which is uh, essentially the hook that grabs the the fuel door, which I took off just for uh, viewing purposes, which is super easy. They're just two, two little um, Phillips head bolts or uh, Phillips or eight millimeter. Um, but when I pick this van up, uh, fun fact, this is, this van was imported by Larry and I was just watching some YouTubes the other day and he did one with TFL. Um, really nice guy, super, super energetic. Uh, he just picked up a Suzuki. That's the video I watched. It was on some game show in Japan. Really, really interesting. You should check it out if you got a minute, but, um, I wanted to do this today since I skipped a day to make a video because I've been super busy and haven't had a chance uh, to do anything with all the parts that I just got from uh, Amiyama. So uh, I know I made a video on 500 yen and I'm rambling once again, but I made a video on 500 yen and I said, I think I only buy parts from Amazon Japan and 500 yen. I lied. I also get parts from uh, Amiyama. So Amiyama is a great place to get parts for very cheap and pretty good shipping prices compared to like, you know, Yokohama Motors or something. I mean, I use Yokohama Motors and I had a great experience with them. I got an alternator in like two or three days. It was awesome, um, but it is a little bit pricey. So pick and choose your uh, shipping battles. Um, but yeah, so this came from when I got this freshly imported uh, with Larry. Uh, this was broken, so the fuel lid door uh, wouldn't close. It would just uh, push on. So if yours isn't working or the latch is broken or something of that nature, uh, I'm gonna show you how to replace it. And actually a fun fact, um, I'm gonna contact this guy, uh, Sammy the Sandbar, uh, AKA Robert, AKA Sammy the Sandbar. Um, he bought an entire kit uh, off of Yahoo Auctions, which was the locking assembly here with the cable and the fuel door because uh, the fuel door for these have this little uh, hook here. So it grabs onto this and that's how it latches closed versus the uh, key with the tumbler on it. Um, does not, I don't think has that. So you have to get uh, the fuel door that has that thing, Chingus there. And he bought the whole set to switch over to the lever. So I'll have to see if that worked out for him. Um, and if it did, you know, that could be a cool little mod on your uh, locking fuel door. Uh, anyways, let's get started. So you're gonna need a 10 mil wrench uh, or ratchet. And it's very, it's pretty simple. I should probably loosen. And then also on the top in here is a plastic, um, kind of like a body, a body screw or a trim piece screw that you would see on the outside of the vehicle. Um, there's a plastic one on the top. Here it is. So it is at kind of a funky angle. You can maybe get a Phillips head in there, but I have a quarter inch ratchet with a, a Phillips um, socket. And you're gonna need to take that guy off. 
Okay, so I'm gonna use a pick because that plastic screw isn't wanting to come out. And I took the uh, gas lid lid off, but I'm gonna put it back on just in case this pops out and falls into the gas tank. Okay, so that's coming out. Easy peasy. That guy right there, just like a plastic Typical trim screw. So it's like a, uh, kind of like a bike shifting cable or something. Uh, you're just gonna wanna slip it through the, the little track. Okay. And then it's got its little, uh, doohickey inside there. Yeah, so, uh, perfect. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do to get that off, cause it's in there pretty good, um, take a pair of, uh, needle nose pliers, get under that, and then at the same time, let's see if I can show you how to, oh, I got it get underneath the little tip there on top of the metal bracket and then underneath the cable assembly thing and then just squeeze and it it will uh, essentially pop it up okay so other than the fact that i broke it this this piece right here that latches onto the door uh broke off so it wasn't holding it anymore and i did this is the new part here's the part number okay so let's put this guy in here so first of all you're obviously going to slip this back onto the old mount okay so yeah the easiest thing to do is before you do anything uh put the ball the ball tip in there and then you can turn it and then get there you go. And then get the, uh, get the clip. I mean, the, uh, uh, cable in the, in the slot, the ball and cable in the slot. And then we're going to put this back on there. Squeeze that together. Be careful. Push the cable back in since we pulled it out a little bit. And then we're going to put our 10, 10 mil back bolt down back in here. And uh, what's also uh, handy is um, Amazon Japan, I'm sure eBay or uh, Amazon here in America or Canada, wherever you're at. Uh, this is the kit I bought off of Amazon Japan. So, I mean, it, it came up under some sandbar stuff. So uh, there's a lot of... Uh, handy clips in here that will break when you're removing stuff that um, supposedly were fit with the sandbar so so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to see if I have that one that I took off if this kit was worth the money or not. Hmm. The only, uh, yeah. Okay, so here's the one that I took off and here's the one in that kit, brand new. So we're gonna put the new one back in. And even though uh, people like to push these, it's always good to try to thread it in there so you don't mess up the thread so you can reuse it because you start pushing it in 
you're gonna essentially strip it. So get that guy. That's why you wanna have your gas lid on because you don't wanna be dropping stuff down into the tank. Okay. Tighten that, that guy up. You have to take the lid off. Cool, that's tightened up. Put this back on so I don't kick up some dirt. Tighten our 10 mil back up. Theoretically, spiking. Uh, actually, we'll uh, put these are super handy to have too. The screw on the socket, that Phillips on the socket. This is a snap on, but those come in handy when you can't get a Phillips screwdriver in small spots. That can always hit it. recommend that one on your tool in your box of tricks if you're building a set of tools add that on the list I've used that thing I think saved my butt millions of times okay gotta take the lid back off again That's, uh, that's pretty good right there. So I'm gonna tighten that back up. And then we're gonna go inside the van and make sure uh, everything I just told you actually uh, did something. But yeah, you could probably uh, find the kit, like, I mean, uh, off a used sandbar. Uh, the cable, the lever that goes inside, the, I'm sure the holes are probably drilled out in the cab already because I'm it was probably just uh maybe just an extra or they probably have the holes there or self-tapping screws and then you would run the cable through and you could probably just mount that up but let's see if that uh latches for one no it does not latch poor k there we go. Okay, so I think the tab just needed to be bent back in. Let's go inside and pop it out. <sighs> Bingo. Man, I love it when stuff works. Perfect. And we're flush, more even. Yeah, so uh, if you're having issues, um, broken mechanism or any of that stuff, I'm sure the parts are still available uh, at Amiyama. I mean, if they're making the locking mechanism, they probably have the cable and all that other good stuff. Or find it used on Yahoo Auctions, 500 yen. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm gonna try to do some more stuff. I got. Uh, cap and rotor going on uh, Plug wires doing a little tune-up and I know this is all basic stuff, but there are a, a few people that don't know how to uh, Change some of those parts or uh, There are different cap and rotors depending on um, Your sandbar even though the motors all look the same uh, Some cap and rotors are a little slightly different. There's clip-on and then there's screw kind so I'm gonna do a video of the screw-on kind with the with this fuel injected uh, sandbar, and uh, I'm gonna do a motor mount, the rear motor mount, which I'm sure you've seen the rectangular-looking dude on the driver's side on the way back. The motor starts sagging down, that starts separating. Um, so I'm gonna do that uh, pretty soon. Um, brake pads um yeah so follow along if something along those lines is something you got to do 
Um, I really appreciate it if you are subscribed and are watching my videos. I'm not making any money or anything off of these. These are just uh, something I enjoy doing and um, I'm kind of, my girlfriend says, hey, you know, explain how to do this stuff so I can work on the sandbars. I'm like, why, are you gonna kill me or something? <laughs> I'm kidding, she's not gonna kill me. So I'm just trying to explain everything uh, as if kind of my girlfriend was gonna watch this and you know, I needed to point out step by step where this bolt goes and how to do this and stuff like that. So I'm no Mr. Subaru, but you know, um, I can help figure out uh, a few things. So again, I appreciate it if you're following along. If you're not following along, I'm glad you're here. Uh, if you don't have sandbar and that's why you're not following along, get yourself a sandbar. You won't regret it. Cool. Take it easy. Uh, see you on the next one.